Electrophilic substitution of an aromatic ring requires a pretty strong electrophile, and in nitration, sulfonation, and halogenation, we've seen examples of those so far. An appealing one from the organic chemist perspective would be a carbocation, since this would establish a new carbon-carbon bond, and organic chemists love, love, love making carbon-carbon bonds. So if there were a way, for example, to rip a halide off of an organohalide or an alkyl halide to generate a carbocation that's reactive with aromatic rings, this is an appealing way, at least theoretically, to generate carbon-carbon bonds. This is the basic principle of Friedel-Crafts alkylation, which is a re reaction that links an aromatic ring to an alkyl group through the, through the intermediacy of a trigonal planar carbocation, which is the active electrophile. Now, before you get too excited, I want to temper your expectations. This reaction is not that useful for reasons we'll see later in the video. It has some severe limitations. We're going to solve most of those limitations with the second type of Friedel-Crafts reaction, the Friedel-Crafts acylation. So we're going to talk about alkylation just as kind of a prototypical example of electrophilic aromatic substitution. Allows us to drive home that standard mechanism yet one more time. See the generation of an interesting active electrophile, but synthetically it is by no means as useful as acylation and even some of the other um, electrophilic aromatic substitutions like nitration. But in any event, let's dig into Friedel-Crafts alkylation. So in this reaction, an alkyl chloride or bromide is combined with a Lewis acid like AlCl3. It's like halogenation in that way. We're trying to make now carbon rather than a halogen electrophilic by treating now an alkyl halide with a Lewis acid. And the byproduct here is HX, the hydrohalic acid, either HBr or HCl, depending on which alkyl halide we started with. Ultimately, as we'll see, the AlCl3 Lewis acid catalyst gets regenerated at the end of the mechanism. That's why I haven't listed it here as a byproduct. So, how is the active electrophile generated? Well, we have Rx, the alkyl halide, together with AlCl3. This is a potential Lewis base, the X atom, and the Al atom is a great Lewis acid. And so these can get together via coordination like so. This we can think of from the aluminum's perspective as association of a nucleophile to the aluminum center. And this generates a species that should remind you of the active electrophile and halogenation reactions. It's just now we have an alkyl group where there was a halogen atom previously. And if the conditions are right, and we'll talk about that if at the end of the slide, this can lose that great leaving group that we saw in halogenations, the AlXCl3 anion, to give a carbocation R+. And we would call this D sub N, dissociation of a nucleofuge or leaving group, as it's more colloquially called, to generate quite often a carbocation. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. R plus, the trigonal carbocation, is the active electrophile in Friedel-Crafts alkylation reactions. And now we're on the typical mechanism of electrophilic aromatic substitution. A pair of pi electrons from the aromatic ring coordinates to R. This establishes an arrhenium ion, uphill in energy. This is the rate determining step of the standard mechanism. And then a deprotonation affected by X minus, quote unquote, built into the AlCl3 X minus anion, produces the substituted, alkyl substituted benzene product, as well as HX and AlCl3. So, fantastic. We've made a carbon carbon bond. That's awesome. However, there are some pitfalls. And the very first pitfall comes in when we think about this loss of a leaving group step. If that generates a primary carbocation, that's a problem, right? And so primary alkyl halides actually don't react exactly through this mechanism since they're unable because of the instability of primary cations to lose that leaving group. This will not form under any circumstances. Hopefully you pick that up in Organic Chemistry 1. Still true now that that's not going to form. However, this can still, this species, this reactive intermediate right here, can still react with benzene via an SN2 rather than an SN1-like mechanism. So, for example, benzene can displace that leaving group in an SN2-looking step, and then after loss of a proton in that second step of the standard EAS mechanism, we get the primary alkyl-substituted benzene. So, 
This looks very appealing and it does work in some cases. However, this reaction does still have pitfalls that have to do with the possibility of rearrangements of carbocations and carbocation-like reactive intermediates under these reaction conditions. And to explore this, I want to look at two examples on this slide of problematic friedel crafts alkylation reactions. The first uses N-butyl chloride. Reaction of N-butyl chloride with benzene and AlCl3 does give some N-butyl benzene, which is the expected product via SN2 displacement at this carbon right here, right? SN2 displacement with benzene as the nucleophile and that Lewis acid coordinated chloride as the leaving group. However, another product is also formed. And to see where this other product comes from, let's take a look at that active electrophile here with chlorine coordinated to the Lewis acid. There's a hydrogen in a beta relationship to that chlorine. And this leads to a situation where the CH electrons can migrate over and displace Cl4Al minus, AlCl4 minus, to give a secondary carbocation. We might call this 1,2R plus SN2. It's a 1,2 rearrangement with these electrons migrating over one atom, but also with the loss of a leaving group. This produces a secondary carbocation, which is much more stable than a primary carbocation and a viable reactive intermediate to consider. But reaction of this with benzene is going to produce a secondary alkyl product with a new bond at this carbon. Sec-butyl benzene, we might say, with benzene linked at the secondary position of butane. And so what we're seeing here is a rearrangement, essentially, of the active electrophile. There's no discrete primary carbocation, but that Lewis acid-coordinated alkyl halide can still rearrange to give a carbocation that is secondary and is therefore not prohibitively unstable, something that shows up in the reaction mixture. And here we get a not insignificant amount of the sec-butyl ben benzene product, which is difficult to separate from the N-butyl product due to similarities in structure. Given the chance, secondary carbocations can even rearrange to tertiary carbocations if the structural conditions are right, and that's shown in this example. So let's start with the Lewis acid-coordinated alkyl halide. There it is. Let's imagine that can lose the leaving group, AlCl4- to give a carbocation, but we've got the conditions for a 1-2 rearrangement. We've got a CH bond adjacent to a trigonal carbocation center, and that H, that CH bond can migrate, and when it does, we end up at a tertiary carbocation that's more stable than the secondary carbocation we started out with. So this is an energetically downhill process to produce a tertiary carbocation, and that cation is going to be the one in highest concentration and will give the major product, which is not the secondary alkyl product, but the tertiary alkyl product with benzene ring attached to this carbon linked to three other carbon groups and no hydrogens, right, via the intermediacy of this tertiary carbocation. So secondary carbocations are going to rearrange to tertiary carbocations. You've probably seen this before in the context of E1 and SN1 reactions, and it comes up in friedel crafts alkylations as well. A few other limitations of the friedel crafts alkylation, if you weren't sick of it enough already. First of all, the organohalide must be an alkyl halide. Alkenal halides like this, aryl halides, bromobenzene, chlorobenzene, do not react in this reaction. And this is because those don't lead to relatively stable trigonal carbocations. Um, loss of a halide from bromobenzene would produce a phenyl cation, ugh, which is much, much less stable than a trigonal carbocation with three single bonds. Right? So we need a sp3 hybridized carbon linked to X in order for this reaction to work. A big practical problem with friedel crafts alkylation is that substitution of H with an alkyl group puts an electron donating group on the benzene ring. It makes the ring more electron rich, makes the ring an even better nucleophile. And so, for example, in this case, where we're using terp-butyl chloride, the terp-butyl group is actually a pretty darn good donating group. And so it will donate electrons into the benzene ring after one substitution and cause a second substitution 
para to the first, and we'll soon understand why this happens in a para arrangement. It's not just a steric thing because of the large size of the terpetal group, although that certainly helps. The terpetal group also directs substitution to para position, as we'll learn soon. So polyalkylation can be an issue. Thankfully, it's a pretty easy issue to solve using friedel crafts acylation. We'll solve that soon. This third point is another important practical limitation, that friedel crafts alkylation, because carbocations are actually not that reactive if our nucleophile is a stable aromatic compound, electron-poor arenes generally do not react well in friedel crafts alkylation. So for example, nitrobenzene, the nitro group is a fantastic electron withdrawing group, and this ring is actually too electron-poor to coordinate to a carbocation in a reasonable time in a, with a reasonable reaction rate. And so at a practical time scale, we observe no reaction of nitrobenzenes in Friedel-Crafts alkylation reactions.